This week's game is a dominoes game called Mexican Train, one that we've been playing for years and years with Josh's family. And it's simple once you get the hang of it. It's for two to six, sometimes eight players. It's a little trickier the more people you have. And you don't have to have a Mexican Train set, but it definitely helps. So I'll show you the one that we have and where to get it and that kind of stuff. Super fun, super easy and a good time to like sit and talk and laugh and just have fun. So let's do it. This is how the game works. It comes in this, all these dominoes come in this cool handy dandy carrying case. We each pick our favorite color train. I take the green. Clear. Blue. I'm gonna take red. This is kind of like the train turn style and it's, it stays in the middle of the table. We'll move these out of the way. And now we all uh, pick dominoes. Obviously, we we mix them up. You can't see them because there's four of us, four and under. Uh, if you have four or less players, I should say, you take 15 dominoes. And if you have five or more players, you take 12 dominoes. This is how people are setting up their dominoes, making trains to use. So what we've done is we've each picked our 15 dominoes and the object of the game is to get rid of your dominoes first. And you're gonna get rid of them just as you would in typical dominoes where you're lining up the pips on the domino with each other. So the this could go with that and then that could go with this. We have a pretty big table, but a lot of times what you wanna do is instead of going end to end, you might wanna actually go sideways just to kind of conserve space because you're gonna start seeing that this is gonna get pretty big. When you're, when the first person is out of dominoes, the game's over and everybody has to add up the amount of pips that they have in their hand and that's their score. The lowest score wins. Everything is the amount of dominoes on, or the amount of pips on the dominoes, except the double zero is 50. If you get stuck with the double zero in your hand, it's 50 points and, and you don't want that. Now, the rest of the dominoes, these are, we're gonna draw from these. We, did, we made them in two different stacks. Um, just so for convenience, uh, that's where we draw from. And we are using up to, what is this? 12 sided dominoes. So the first round you start with the, with the 12, whoever has the double 12 goes first. I happen to have it. So I go first and whoever puts down a double always gets a, uh, another turn right after. So because I started the game, I'll go ahead and put down my second domino. And this is called starting my train. So this little cutout is for my train and I'm going to be starting my train. And as we go around the table, everybody's gonna start their own train with a 12 sided domino. I took my turn and now it's Mickey's turn. And you'll see it goes pretty fast as we're going around because everybody automatically knows what's the next domino they're gonna put down. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I have a, this is the only one that I had that was that side of the 12. And Julia's going, and then Drew's going, and then Josh goes. Now he played that because that's the next one he has set up in his train. Okay, we've each gone around twice, and now it's back to Josh. We're gonna go ahead and put them end to end just to, so there's no confusion, instead of putting them like this to save space. Now, each of us have our own train at the depot. All right, <laughs> there's one extra train that we start. It's called the Mexican train and it's a community train. And whoever has a 12 sided domino can start it at any time. Whoever starts it, there's only one, that person will put it down and then we can all go from that domino as well. So I'm gonna start it. And now Mickey has two options. She can either play off of the two that she has here or she can play off of this eight. Now just a little bit on strategy you're gonna see that you're gonna have the majority of your dominoes all lined up perfectly. That if everything went well, they'd all go down, but you're gonna have a few stragglers. This Mexican train is the great place to use your stragglers. You don't wanna start, or you don't wanna use one of the dominoes that's in the middle of your train on the Mexican train because now it messes up your progress of getting rid of the rest of these. So for example, right now it's Mickey's turn. If these two lines are her automatic train, Dominoes, she's not gonna to wanna to use those on the Mexican train. On my turn, I can either play here or right here since Josh started the Mexican train, but I don't really have that. These are my st stragglers, like Josh said. 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go directly with what I was planning on with my train. Okay, Julia's turn. It's Drew's turn. So he put down a double, so he gets to go again right away. All right, now it's my turn. I put down a double, I get to go again. Ooh, and he got rid of that 50 Yeah, that's a, that's a big, ugly domino to have in your hand. My turn, so I am gonna do what's next in my train. And this is where you start like kind of staggering just so you save space. All right, Julia. Okay, Julia's turn. I can't add to the two. She, she can either go here or she can come over here at the Mexican train, but she can't do either. So she has to go to the boneyard. Couldn't go here or there. So I need to pick up one and it doesn't work for either. So I have to put up my train. Now putting up your train means that Julia's train is now open to all of us. So remember those stragglers that we were talking about that don't quite fit our nice train that we made? That's a perfect place to get rid of them without messing up our train. Just the same as the Mexican train was uh, used for that purpose. So Drew's gonna jump on that right away. And not only does he get rid of his stragglers, but we just destroyed Julia's whole plan to go out because we disrupted um, uh, her train. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that too. So I'm gonna add one. And now it's Julia's turn. What is she going to do? I can add to it so I can take down my train. Now, now that she took down her train, we can't go, we can't empty our, or use up our dominoes on her train. But if she forgets to take that train down before Andrew takes his turn, it has to stay the entire round again. So it's really important that you remember to take down that train. Now, if Julia didn't have... A, a nine, she might have left the train up there strategically just so that a different domino um, would be on her train when it came around to her turn the next time. Julia's turn. Now Andrew's putting down a double. Now remember I always said that you always get another turn as soon as you put down a double. So Drew gets another turn. However, he doesn't have to go here. He can go on the Mexican train or if Julia's train was still up, he could he could add to her, uh, to her train. So where are you gonna put your next domino? Now, this is strategic because it's now my job. I have to close off that double. So I was planning on putting my a one here and keep my train going, and he just derailed me because I now have to take a domino and close out that double. Close out means to add another domino to it. And that is very strategic because a lot of times you'll have somebody who only has one domino left and you feel it, he wants to put it on his train. Somebody in front of him plays that double and now he's forced to close that double instead of finishing out his train. So if I was unable to fix this train, meaning put, let's call it a caboose, I would have to go to the boneyard and draw. And if I couldn't, if I couldn't fix the train, it would make my train now up. So there's a lot of strategy in putting down a double and trying to play it somewhere else. It definitely messes up the other people in the game. Okay, so Josh's train is up now, and if I can't add to that, if I can't fix it, if I don't have one of those, then I would have to go to the boneyard and draw one. And if I couldn't do it, then my train would go up, and it keeps going around and around. People can't do their next turn until this one is fixed first. We've taken a few turns off camera. We're almost to the end. I have two dominoes left. Mickey has three. The kids each have two. We added our own rule that when we come down to our last two dominoes and we're playing the second to last domino, kind of like when you play Uno, you have to tap the domino. And if I should make that play without tapping the domino and somebody catches me, I have to draw two dominoes from the boneyard. Now it's Mickey's turn. All right, I'm down to just three. So I am going to make this play. And I'm gonna tap as I put it down so I can't be. All right, Julia. I want to Drew. That's a double, which means I get another turn, and I'm out. Drew is the winner again. Now we all flip over our dominoes and we add up the pips on the dominoes. I got 12. And I got 12. I just have one domino. I got 13. So for round one, those would be our scores. And now the next round, we would start with the 11 sided domino. And then the time after, or the turn after that, we would go the 10 and the 9 all the way down to zero for a total of 13 rounds. Because that's a long game, a lot of times we'll just use the even numbers. So we'll go 12, 10, 8, etc. Or sometimes we'll just play one round because this game can, you know, take five or 10 minutes around. 
I have a set of rules for you to go by. And then I also created some score sheets. Now the set we got comes with this little pad. <laughs> now we jump to the next step. Okay. A long standing Provo's tradition that started today where we play Mexican <laughs> train on Cinco de Mayo. There we go. One, two, orle pues. <laughs> Let's help you to finish it. <laughs>